Neapolitan, New York, Chicago. These are all delicious pizzas, but they're kind of hard to make at home. I'm wearing sweats, I'm drinking wine. Let's make something easier. <laughs> Today we're going to be making the easiest pizza I know how to make. It also happens to be one of the tastiest pizzas I know how to make. We're going to be drawing inspiration from the Italian grandmas who've been pushing doughs into pans for decades. What drives me crazy about this pizza is the fried crispy bottom. It's like eating a hard shell pizza taco. We're also going to be putting the cheese under the sauce. Sounds insane. Not in Detroit. That's right, Italian granny meets that Detroit style pan pizza. Let's make one. To make the dough, we're gonna need 425 grams or three and one quarters cup all-purpose flour, seven grams or one packet of instant yeast, two generous glugs of extra virgin olive oil, eight grams or two teaspoons of kosher salt, and 300 grams of warm to very warm tap water. This warm water gets the yeast in the stove moving. We want this pizza to be out of the oven in four hours total, so having a super active dough helps us out. So into the mixing bowl goes our water and yeast. I recommend letting the yeast bloom for five minutes to prove the product. This proves that it's still alive. Dead yeast is a double bummer when you've decided you want pizza. I've been on a flour and yeast before in this situation and haven't been able to make more, and then I just don't get to eat pizza. We're gonna mix this dough on medium for four to five minutes until the dough just starts to clear the bowl. You can definitely make this pizza by hand, and I've often done that. The results are equal, I just decided to use the mixer today. Okay, once we got a strong dough ball, we're gonna wrap the bowl with plastic and let it rise on our counter for two and a half hours until the dough is about two and a half times its original size. And it looks like this. Shiny, soft, and bubbly. Next, we're gonna liberally oil a half sheet pan and turn our dough out onto it. This is where we're going to do a little bit of light massage to get the dough flat and stretch slightly. Using your fingertips, press the dough, pushing it out inch by inch till it forms about a 10 inch round. At this point, take an additional sheet pan, cover and let relax in the countertop for an additional hour. Now we gotta make the sauce. I don't know, I don't know, I think I'm more of a uncooked sauce guy at my core. These pizzeria style pizzas usually do a cooked sauce with garlic powder, oregano, dried basil, sugar. I decided to kind of do a crossover between the two. This product is gonna have the texture of a cooked sauce without having to spend the time to cook one down. So we're gonna combine one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes in puree. To that, we're gonna add one teaspoon of dried garlic, two teaspoons of dried oregano, two teaspoons of crushed chili flake, two teaspoons of salt, and one teaspoon of sugar. For pepperoni, grab a stick. You can use store-bought thin sliced pepperonis. It'll be a little bit different. I like them thick. That casing around the outside of the pepperoni shrinks up, making these pepperonis cup, so they get all full of red, spicy pepperoni fat, and it I'm grating Romano cheese here to bring some sharpness to the party, and I'm adding in some Parmesan from the back of my fridge to finish off this chunk I had. I'm gonna quickly assemble all the toppings for our pizza. Thickly sliced whole fat mozzarella from a brick, our hand sliced thick pepperonis, our grated Romano Parmesan blend, the sauce we made earlier, and some Calabrian chilies. Once we've got our prep done and our topping sorted, it's time to stretch and build our pizza. Using your fingertips, gently push the dough into the corners of the sheet pan. The dough should be fully relaxed and shouldn't put up a fight. Double check your pan is liberally coated in olive oil. This is what the dough fries in. In the meantime, preheat your oven to 550. This is gonna be as close to pizzeria temp as we can get at home. To build our pizzas, we're going cheese down first. We're gonna shingle the brick mozzarella all across in a single layer, and then we're gonna come behind with our thick crushed tomato sauce and just spread. You don't wanna to be too liberal, we don't want a soupy pizza. Once we've got our sauce down, we're gonna shingle in our thick sliced pepperonis. Be liberal with these, they're kind of the center point of the pizza. Pepperoni tastes good. 
We're gonna finish this pizza off with that greater Romano Parmesan blend. And I've also snuck in a little bit of fresh whole milk mozzarella here as a secret ingredient. I love biting into a huge chunk of clean whole milk mozzarella. Getting those pops in on the pizza is fun. So we wanna keep that in mind. Ooh, that's hot. Man, sure for a way to ruin this experience is to take a bite of that right away. I'm not going to. I'm bummed. You can't just do it. It's crispy. Yum! All right, we did it. We made easy, crispy pepperoni pizza. The beauty of this pizza is that anyone can make it and you don't need a lot of time. You don't need a lot of planning either. If you make your mind up by 3 p.m., you're crunching pizza by seven. Sauce on top of the cheese, fried pepperoni, Calabrian chilies, fresh mozzarella. Don't even worry about it. Okay, okay, tastes good. Whatever, whatever. If you got any value out of this video, click subscribe. Thanks for sticking around. See you next time.